All right, welcome back for all I know podcast. What's up, Raul? How you doing, bro? Amazing as always. Yeah. Woke up looking great today. Oh. <laughs> okay. Starting off on a good note. There we go. Very right. Only way to start off. <laughs> Oh, well, we have our uh, special guest, Destiny. How's it going, Destiny? Great. Uh, blessed, blessed as ever. Thank you for coming on. Last time we had a... She was actually on the podcast before, but we had some technical difficulties. Uh, didn't work out like we had planned. But welcome back. Thank you for coming back. Of course. Back again, back again. Exactly. Where are you visiting us from today? I am coming from San Jose. <laughs> 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 is that where you're from or is that where you live I, that was i was wondering if that was the next question but um that is where i live currently right now yes okay. um i am originally from oregon slash montana okay so i don't really know which one to say i grew up like half and half libby montana and then salem oregon oh so you went back and forth you weren't like okay that makes yeah. more sense that was, that was but <laughs> i was born in sacramento california and then I just came back and went from Sacramento to San Jose. Okay, Damn. so Sacramento to... Born in Sacramento <laughs> to Libby, Montana, and then from Oregon back to Montana, and then back to Oregon, and then from Oregon after I graduated to Sacramento, and then Sacramento to San Jose. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's and I'm coming from San Jose. <laughs> yeah, you moving again? No, I'm playing. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so what do you do? Tell the audience, introduce yourself a little bit. All right, well, I am Destiny again, and um, I'm currently an entertainer, nightlife entertainer. Nightlife entertainer. So what do, what do you mean by that? Like you're a, you got a talk show or what, what's going on? <laughs> right. Um, I guess you can say I am a performer. I dance. Gotcha. Oh, okay. okay. How long have you been a, a dancer for? Three years so far. Three and a half years. Okay. So how did you uh, find yourself dancing? Well, um, I originally, like, growing up, I always liked to dance, like, just some contemporary dance. And I was in dance before, so um, dancing is something that I always like to do, right? Well, there was an incident on in November 28th of 2015. Mm -hmm. I had got ran over by a car. Oh, my God. Right. Um, and I just woke up the next day in the ICU bald <laughs> with the left side of my skull missing out of my head damn shit so um i went through like three months where i didn't have the left side of my skull in my head oh my god so three months later march 30th 2016 i get the left side of my skull put back into my head and from there i just was going through a stage of rehabilitation and during that rehabilitation stage, because I really had to learn everything all over again, like writing, reading, just rem just going through a whole scenarios of remembering people, me, who I was, what was going on in my life, what I lost, all kinds of things at once. I needed to make some money, but I wasn't really like in a mental state too, and. Well, so I'm, I'm I kind of want to stop real quick. Are you you? So how was that? Like, do you remember? Yeah, I want to know what happened. How, what <laughs> led you up to getting hit by a car, first of all? What the right. fuck were you doing? Were you drunk, were you drunk walking across the street? Oh, my gosh. Like, did the car <laughs> run over the curb and hit you? Like, I still ask this question to this day. I tried to imagine it. But I actually was um, selling cars at the time. And I had barely just maybe like five months or four months into finally getting out of my training to learn to sell cars. And I was I had a really good month. I think I was at like this was my seventh car sale that I had that day, right? Damn. And it was when Shit. um the time moved backward. What's that? Um Spring Head, Spring Oh, uh the time change? Yeah. Um it was when it moved back. Daylight savings. Daylight savings, thank you. Sorry. So it was daylight savings. So you know it got darker sooner. Mm -hmm. Um but I had sold my first car to some Chinese people and they are really hard to sell cars to along with a few <laughs> other people but they were really hard to sell cars to and um, some terminology for car sales people is a uh, full pop i sold them full pop so does that and, mean like full price yeah like there's no 
cutting down the price. No, like they bought the car exactly however we wanted to sell it because oh, wow. there's door, there's avenues you go through. You know, like the sales managers, they they need to make their money too. You yeah. know, so mm-hmm. yeah, that's impressive. I had to stay there a little longer than normal, and I guess I was just walking outside with my friend. I was goofing off, or my coworker. I was goofing off on my way to the car, and where we park, um, I have to cross a little street in the auto mall. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I can think of is that I assumed that the car was going to stop at the stop sign, and it didn't. Mm. And as I'm crossing the street, it, and that road was, it was Stockton Boulevard. It's in El Grove, the auto mall. Um, there's a freeway right next to it. So maybe I didn't hear the car or something. I can't tell you. Then I just woke up Damn, <laughs> in the man. ICU. So how long of a time gap was it between like getting hit to when you woke up? Did they tell you? Like, oh, it's been like... It was three weeks. So I was going to come up for three weeks. And they said that I wasn't supposed to wake up. They said that, like, it was a wrap for me. Holy <laughs> crap. Shit. So do you... I mean, this is a stupid question. I don't even know how I'm about to ask it. But do you remember anything from the coma? Like, do you, were you having dreams? Like, what was... No, I don't remember anything. Damn. I think that... And I think... Uh, I had a witness. I, I had a witness. And... By him telling me like what happened when we were leaving the door to when I got hit and him watching the whole thing, then I I think I'm imagining, mm-hmm. but I don't know if that's what I really saw, is that I saw the car approaching and I thought it was going to stop at the stop sign and it didn't stop. Mm-hmm. And we always speed through the auto mall for some reason. I don't know why, but mm-hmm. I know I did. Mm-hmm. I would never follow the speed limit and I would always do a California stop. I never really yeah. stopped. <laughs> so... Damn. That's the only thing I can assume, and yeah, I just woke up, and I had a dream right before I woke up, and my mom's ex-husband was right there. He was like, what are you doing? When I woke up, I'm like, I'm braiding my hair. Like, who are you? I didn't know anybody that was in the room. I didn't know anybody, oh, who wow. they were, nothing. So, you forgot everybody? Yeah, I forgot everybody. <laughs> like, I'm lit- like, literally did not know who anybody was, and... Could even couldn't even really talk anyways because they had the life support tube, like you know down my throat. So shit. So people you've known your whole life, like of course they showed you pictures and shit, and they're like, "This is you when you're little. This is me." Like. <laughs> right. Um. I mean, eventually, and the doctor said I would eventually gain memory, and I started to. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of things like when I went back to Oregon to visit family and see family. There was a lot of people that like really wanted to see me because they heard about the accident, and they were telling me all kinds of things I used to do for them. And I'm like, are you like I couldn't even believe it. But then it would take time, and then I would remember for some uh, reason. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, not only did that accident happen, but I was also on a lot of narcotics. So mm-hmm. that I feel like that had an effect on it too. So. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like, I mean, this is kind of another dumb question. Do you feel like you changed a lot since then based on what people have told you you used to be like or how you used to act? Do you feel like you kind of flip-flopped at all or do you feel like it was, Yes. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, I flip-flopped all the way because I became a dancer. Okay, fair enough. That's a good point. Yeah, that's something point. I would have never have done. That's where we were going with this conversation. That's So how does this story correlate with you becoming a dancer? Right. Um, well... Like I said, I needed to make some money okay. and, you know, where can you make fast money and, mm-hmm. and underway? So and did you like, someone was like, hey, you should come dance at my establishment or was it like a friend told you like, hey, you should come dance? Like, how does that work? No, I just always admired, da- like I admired the dancing life, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. as uh, we can say, stripper, I admired, I admired that, mm-hmm. but I always, before my accident, was like, that's something I could never do. Mm -hmm. I would never do that. Like, that's crazy. Why would I? I could never do that. But dancing is a, that was a passion for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Like, that was a way I can make money. I I can dance. Let's, let's make the money. So I taught myself how to do a couple of tricks on it and on the pool. (laughs) (laughs) I taught myself how to do a couple of tricks on the pool and I got straight to it. And I started in Portland. But the funny thing was, is that um, when I was selling cars, my coworker that witnessed my accident, um, there was a cafe that you know we would go to mm-hmm. all the time when I was working there, and he was just like, instead of dancing there, like you should just dance out here, come back to Sacramento, mm-hmm. come back from Portland, come to Sacramento, and came back, and then ever since then, <laughs> huh? 
How was the first night? I'm sure you had to be like hella nervous or something like that. Oh gosh, if I remember. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think I was really nervous. But then when I started dancing, that like washed it away. Like, mm -hmm. I'm I'm in motion. I'm in action. So yeah. that didn't matter. But being in there, it was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And some things like giving private lap dances, I was like scared and didn't want to even do. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be topless. Like oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be topless. I felt weird. So a, a little bit of me was still there. But at the same time, I was still taking some of my medication mm -hmm. and really had no filter. <laughs> I was uh, like, let's let's go. So do you think that the medication really played a huge factor in it all? Like, do you think if you weren't on medication, you wouldn't have started, like, dancing or felt as comfortable dancing, I guess I should say? I think that um, without the medication, I would probably would have never went down that route. Mm -hmm. I would have had more of a filter, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I kind of want to ask, too, are there any, right off the bat, any stigmas you kind of want to break? Because I feel like people have, or obviously people are opinionated as it is. But when it comes to dancing, professional dancing, are there any stigmas that you hear a lot from people that you're like, that's not fucking true? Like, are you joking me? You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I struggled with the, the dancing life um, because a lot of my family judged me. Like, mm. they're like, oh, you're a hoe. Damn. Like, you're hoeing. You got a pimp. Like, all this stuff. And it's like, that's not even what. Yeah. That's not that's not true. And it would hurt me at the same time, but at the same time I was still doing it. Mm -hmm. So the stigma like I would want to break is you don't know what kind of you don't know what trials and tribulations that person is going through and yeah. what makes them do what they have to do in their situation mm -hmm. at all. And that would be something if I was trying to definitely try to break is because you can never judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Or for whatever they're doing at the moment. Well, I think your story kind of perfectly puts that, too, because, I mean, that makes a lot of sense to go through a extreme experience like you went, like being in a coma for three weeks and then waking up and like having to relearn everything. Yeah, and no like, left side of the school. Yeah, yeah, like, for what? real. It's going to be hard to get a job as it is after something like that, just to kind of relearn the skills like even you had from salesmanship. Like that's. And, yeah. you know, I it wasn't like I just went straight into dancing. Mm -hmm. I also I. Because I was a baby, like I had just turned 17 years old. I was 17 turning 18, or 18 turning 19, my bad, sorry. After you got hit by the car? Yeah, so I was 19 years old when I got hit by the car, right? Damn. And I had moved from Oregon to California, and that was, like, I just graduated in mm -hmm. 2013 to come to California Damn. to get into school. And I struggled a little bit to get into school. Like, I, you know, I had to get myself established. I had needed to get a job. I needed to get my own place. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my sisters let me stay there for a little bit, get my money together. I got a place. And then after getting a place, it was just like, I need to get into school. But how can I balance going to school and trying to make money to be able to survive? Because mm -hmm. you know how expensive it is to live oh, in yeah. California. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And during that process, mm -hmm. that's something that my mind was set on. Like, I really want to go to school, you know? I never really got around to it. And then I get hit by a car. And then once I get my school back in my head, I'm like, you know what? I need to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And that's what really helped me rehabilitate myself more. Because mm -hmm. even though I tested, I, I, I had to take the assessment test, but I tested low. But my brain injury, it didn't really put me in a good predicament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I tested low and I really had to start all over again. I was learning arithmetic all over again. Damn. <laughs> but I struggled with that. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know my times. I had to learn my time table all over again. Damn. So math, I really struggled with math. And it was just frustrating going through that process. And then at the same time, even though I danced that night, I also got a day job. I was working at Joe's Crab Shack and <laughs> serving. I went through a lot of weird phases. Like I was nervous when I would communicate with people i felt oh. like um what would you say uh socially like, like an anxious almost or? yeah like, like socially awkward like you awkwardly mean, yeah. yeah i was very socially awkward so but i felt that inside and maybe nobody mm. i don't know maybe they seen it maybe they didn't but that mm. it was a mental thing mm. and that was what sucked for me is because in my eyes, I feel like I look like nothing happened to me, mm -hmm. but a mental disability, nobody can see that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a very big struggle for me because no one would ever know that I had, you know, got ran over by a car and I had a, uh, what is it called? Um, thing. 
like a fake skull damn near no i mean it was i got my no it was called um what did you say it was? lobotomy is that no what it's know? like a neuro no a neurotrans i don't, I don't know, even man. know you got brain <laughs> surgery damn near yeah. basically <laughs> much what it is. um yeah my skull was frozen and got put back in my head and so there's something that holds it together in the places that they have to put it back but so no one would know that unless i told them yeah and but i still was struggling with like if you know if you look it up damaging the left side of your frontal lobe there's a lot of things that come with the left side of your frontal lobe oh yeah it's kind of like an important piece yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing i struggled with so it wasn't like i just went into dancing i did try to rehabilitate myself mm -hmm. but then at the same time was i working and dancing at night i just realized like i'm better off dancing mm -hmm. well like, i imagine you have more confidence dancing too because like you're not having to communicate because i mean even communicating with tables uh, based off my server experience, it always is kind of like a weird interaction because you don't know how they're going to interact and with you and et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine that on top of the whole losing your memory and how, how, like the Regain social Regaining all over. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? That was where I'm really, I mean, to this day, I think I'm still really good at mm -hmm. is, um, you know, socializing. I'm very mm. good at that. And serving, like I even continued to serve. I was working at Hooters my last job. Mm. So, I mean, I still serve. So. Hmm. So are you full-time dancing now? I'm full-time dancing now. I actually um, opened up my own fictitious business name. No way. Called Dabs. Hmm. Short for down ass bitches. <laughs> 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 and my birthday is coming up, right? So October 1st. I'm going to rent out, and it's kind of like a trial to see how it works out. Uh -huh. I'm going to run out a party bus because with my business name and, you know, thing I want to start, um, I want to do like a mobile function, right? Damn. So a party bus. So for my birthday, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to rent out my own party bus and see how it goes. I have a few people that are going to dance on the bus with me and, you know, make it a lot of fun. Oh, Damn. that'll be dope. That's pretty sick. Mm -hmm. Dabs. I like the name, too. Right. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's an oldie. Yeah. But you know what? Instead of calling it down as bitches, I was like, dabs. Gotcha. So coming from, like, I would say the Hooters environment into the stripper environment, is it kind of, like, similar as far as, like, how people feel like they can talk to you? Yeah, it is very similar. Hmm. Uh, a lot similar. Because with Hooters, they, they're they a lot different than any serv serving industry. Um, they want all the girls to communicate with all the tables so i can sit down with you while you're eating and and communicate with you talk to you have a conversation everything yeah. and still serve my tables versus other restaurants i am just like hi my name's is yeah. <laughs> i'm like, gonna start you off with something to drink <laughs> super <laughs> okay. formal yeah come back like you know the routine that they have but yeah. at hooters like i can sit down with you and actually have a conversation and with everybody that comes in there and not just my tables with all the other girls' tables oh, wow. too. Even, you know, the people that come to the bar and typically with Hooters, people are regular. So, mm -hmm. you know, and huh. it's also cool to be like, as soon as they walk on the door, you know exactly what they want huh. already. Every have, time. Have their <laughs> exact beer ready on the top. And yep, shit. Exactly. Yeah. So. I've only been to Hooters, I think once. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was cool though. It was a cool experience. It's different, right? It's different than any type of... It is, like, and I liked it. You know, I worked there in the morning, but you know what? Hooters, they closed down off of Bascom and Campbell in San Jose. Uh, so I'm not working at Hooters no more. Gotcha. <laughs> so is that why you left Hooters? Because they closed down? Yeah, that's, they closed down. That's commitment right there. Yeah, I was committed. Damn. Was that like your... That was your first like real serious job after your injury, or that was Joe's? Joe's Crab Shack was my first. Um, but I moved from Sacramento to San Jose, and then... From moving to San Jose, which was like a year and a month ago, that I started working at Hooters. Hmm. Damn. It was the money a lot better at uh, the the actual like clubs and stuff than working at Hooters? Way. And <laughs> guess what? I have a choice. I don't have to go to work if I don't want to. Huh. So, And I don't have to call anyone and tell them I'm not coming in. I'm just not going to come. Oh, shit. With Hooters, I'm scheduled. I have to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, so, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, but how does so how does that work in terms of like not you kind of show up whenever like how does i'm super curious about how the business of dancing okay, works okay right um so i mean it depends on where you work because mm -hmm. i mean in san francisco working at the strip clubs there mm -hmm. you it's just like working a real job mm -hmm. to be honest and you they want 
three days guaranteed and mm. there's a time frame that they have you working and you have to show up on time and work until that time. Huh. Um, I kind of work in the underground in San Jose. So, I mean, if I want to be courteous, I can just let you know I'm not going to make it tonight. Yeah. Or you'll text me on a Monday like what my schedule is and I'll tell you if I'm going to work one day, two days, three days, four days out of the week, whatever it is. Mm. So I get to choose my schedule. It's not like I'm... I have a schedule made for me and then I'm only making a, a minimum amount that you're only allowing me to make. Huh. Damn. So. What's the most money you think you've ever made in one one, one night, night of work? Oh my gosh. And you're not working like eight hours. Definitely not. Definitely not. Four <laughs> hours the most. Damn. That's a, <laughs> yeah. um, I a good gig. had went to Vegas for the first time and not I mean, everybody goes to Vegas, so I'm not saying like that's where the money is, mm -hmm. but it was the Mayweather fight, the last fight he just had, which oh, was shit. what in 2017. Oh, I guess McGregor. Yep. Damn. Oh, okay. So guap. <laughs> um, I didn't make guap, but I made six thousand dollars, and that was the most I ever made in one night. Damn. For four hours of work. For four. Well, I mean, I didn't really work at the first. I went to Sapphire first, huh. and everybody was there to watch the game. Mm -hmm. So as I was leaving and so irritated after the fight, like I didn't even make any money here. Mm -hmm. I made like two hundred and thirty dollars, and then the next club I went to was Rhino, and that's where I made the rest of my money. Shit. And literally, I was just sitting in the celebrity room they call it, mm -hmm. and I was just sitting there having a conversation, just like serving. I was having a conversation, and I was thinking in my head, like I'm so irritated. I was at Sapphire. I only made $230. Now I'm here and I'm sitting in this room and I haven't even made a dollar. I just came in here because he invited me to come. And the next thing you know, a guy comes in and hands me $600 in chips. Damn. I stayed there a little longer. And he comes <laughs> back again, $600 more dollars in chips. Then I had to do a stage. Like it just, the money just kept coming in and it was like, I wasn't really working like that. Damn. Shit. So, when, so you said you went from Sapphire to Rhino. Were you, did they know you were coming or do you just kind of show up and be like, hey, I'm a dancer? What's um, up? Well, I, when you work in Vegas, you have to go to, I don't remember what it's called, but you have to go and get a license to work. You got to oh, get wow. your liquor license. They got to check your background, make sure like you have no hoe charges and all kinds of stuff because mm -hmm. there's crazy stuff that happens there. So, um, you know, I had to get fingerprinted and everything and get yeah. a license to actually be able to dance there. Wow. And then you go to the clubs and you don't even dance to, you don't even audition like that. You just go in and change your clothes, come in the heels. Damn. They look at you and they they tell you what time frames they, they'll allow you to work. Damn. Huh. Would you ever go back and uh, dance in Vegas or have you since then? Um, I haven't in like a year and three months. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a mommy now, so uh, it's true. I wow. don't know if I would go back to that. So. What, what was your favorite place to dance? I say in the Bay Area, like Oakland, San Francisco, Ooh, San Jose. Um, well, I would say San Jose for sure. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier. And um, there's not a stage, so I don't have to dance on a stage. Mm. So that's really cool. But if I was to pick a second, which is cool, I would pick the Gold Club in San Francisco. They're really cool. I work the um, morning shift, so I work until like 7 p.m. Like, nine to seven hmm. and they had like a little buffet there and it was really cool like to just the people that you meet it's not just about dancing like you meet a lot of very really cool people I and bet. connect very well so especially in sf yeah, yeah i know right a lot yeah. of and a lot of construction workers will go in there um it's a lot of different kinds of people gotcha. especially when they have the conventions and stuff <laughs> so what what's the uh I mean, I, I guess it kind of goes into the client confidentiality, but like what's the most interesting person that you've met? Like a super successful businessman or like a famous rapper? I, oh, I met two people. Like I have, I met a bank owner and I've met somebody who owns a, a airlines in New Orleans. Whoa. But I met them in Vegas and then I met them in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And th that was really interesting to meet people like that because they come in there and they're not flaunting money like yeah. a lot of people that have a little bit of money nothing compared to them and these are business owners like mm -hmm. not only does he have a, one of the guys had a new orleans airline but also he has his own real estate business oh wow and he was like why are you in here 
Like, I will pay for your license in Vegas. Yeah. Go get your real estate license and you can work for me. Oh, damn. But when you meet people like that, it's just like, okay, well, what? Yeah. what's the catch? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> I, don't, I, 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 I would love that offer, but. Um, yeah, do you get really like weird happen? propositions all the time? I'm like, ah, can't I talk bet. to you anymore. Yeah, I do. I get a lot of weird things. And then for me, it sucks because I am, I don't know, not separating myself, but I. I feel like I'm a counselor with dancing, so I'll have really good ass conversations with people, mm-hmm. and it almost turns into like they want to take it in another direction, like dating oh, and shit. being my boyfriend. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not <laughs> what I'm looking for. It's not how it happens. <laughs> oh, man. Not how this goes. <laughs> Here for the wrong reason. <laughs> right. Oh, so. Well, you probably get that line a lot of, uh, it's like, why are you here? Why are you doing this? Yes. That's probably like the most common thing you hear, huh? Always. I always hear that. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, you said you kind of work in the underground right. in San Jose. What do you mean by underground? Is it kind of more like exclusive type situation? Or? Yeah, it's definitely exclusive and it's invite only. Mm-hmm. Um, very underground. <laughs> That's almost nicer, though, to have it, like, invite only because then it's, like, you don't have some random... Yeah, and it has to be trustworthy because there's been a lot of incidents, if you know anything about San Jose, a lot of crazy stuff that happens there, Mm -hmm. and especially in the nightlife, underground. So they change it up a lot. Mm. So it's definitely invite only, and it makes those girls feel more safer. Mm -hmm. So I was... Is there, like, a competition, I feel like, between dancers a lot? (laughs) Like, a lot of dance battles. (laughs) Um, not dance battles because it's easy to <laughs> see how <laughs> it's easy to see uh, that a girl like I like that dance move she did so you can do it yourself the next uh, time you okay. dance on someone. But I do know that there is a lot of jealousy over money. Huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, me myself, I never count another girl's money. I'm always in there for myself, focus on my own money. But I do know for my sake, um, I have a lot of troubles in that area where no matter where I went, where Atlanta, Hawaii, Vegas, San Jose, San Francisco, where girls are a lot of jealous over the money that you're making. Mm. So I wouldn't say competition, but maybe jealousy over money. Because I can, I mean, there's times where I'm like, dang, I can't even, I can't even make much tonight. And I'm seeing this girl and I feel like I'm better than her mm. and she's making more than me. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that goes for anybody, you know? Yeah. It happens a lot. Huh. So is when it comes to that, is there like a typical, I don't want to say typical dancer, but is there like uh, going from these different places like in Atlanta to Sacramento and dancing in these different areas, is there a kind of a quintessential stripper you always run into, like one who's hella just like over the top or a total bitch or she's always like stripper fights and shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh my God. Trying to produce a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, if we're going to be really real, I mean... There's a lot of situations that I've ran into personally, but me, I will tell you this. When I go to dance, I will drink. But a lot of girls in the life, they do other stuff like Mm. cocaine, smoking weed, drinking, and they be getting messed up. So (laughs) there will be fights. There will definitely be fights like. A girl out of nowhere will be like, oh, I heard you talking. You were talking about me to a trick. And I'm like, what? Like, you're tripping. Like, you must be high because I wasn't even thinking about you. Yeah, like, you're not even a dancer. Who are you? And fights will happen like that. You know, like, (laughs) if I could tell you stories, I have stories all day about a lot of things that happen. What's your favorite? What's your favorite story? I want to hear one of these stories. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Um, Well, actually, it was kind of recent. This is a funny story. So... Uh, me and I have a niece that's actually close to my age, right? Mm-hmm. And we're at, at the club, and there was a time where we were leaving, and she grabbed this fan, like you know those Japanese fans, mm-hmm. and she thought it was my fan because I have a fan in there. And I was like, no, that's not mine, and she put it back. But then the next day we come, it was still in the same place that she put it back in. So, huh. whatever, like yeah, take it, it did. Take but it. there was another spot we went to, and she was like, I need, can I use your fan? I'm like, girl, you should have took that fan that nobody, you know, claimed at the other spot we were at and she's like oh i did (laughs) and so she went and grabbed the fan right (laughs) so she had this fan this whole time and recently like last week she had the fan and we had just got done like doing a double dance for Mm -hmm. somebody and (laughs) this girl comes and bumps into her like pushes her you know and he's kind of like 
pushed her back a little. What the heck? And she sat down and she pulls out that fan and she's fanning herself. She was like, um, is that mine? Oh, shit. <laughs> so now we know whose fan that was. <laughs> and my niece was just not like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. And she's just like, that's my fan. Like, she's just shouting it, yelling about how oh, that's her fan. Damn. And my niece is just like, and so I go to the girl because I know the girl. And I'm like, mm, is there a problem? And she was like, that's my fan. Just rambling about that, her fan. I'm like, okay, well, then take it. Like, take yeah. the fan. Damn. And she snatched the fan. <laughs> Oh, she snatched shit. the fan. You instigated it. I did, but because <laughs> I wanted something to... I'm not going to lie. I wanted something to happen, but <laughs> my niece, she has a lot of respect for me, and I, I brought her to that spot. Uh-huh. So she decided to, like, get up and, like, ante, like, and I... Then the security came, and I was just like, yeah, this girl is crazy. <laughs> I'm going to... That was... Set it up. Yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of crazy, <laughs> and... You know, the security had to come, get involved, talk about, and now we have to apologize over a fan. Like, a, yeah. you could have been ladylike to me, in my opinion, and took us to the side or her to the side, and it's like, um, like, I think that's my fan or something, but you yeah. didn't have to shout that out and yell and do all that crazy stuff that you did. Oh, so you're playing chess with her. She's like, yeah. oh, okay, you're going to do this? I want to do this. Yeah, kind of. And that's kind of what happens to us <laughs> girls in the club. It's like, it just happens. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> like that's that. hella funny. So do you feel like since you started dancing, because I feel like this will probably happen often, is like you almost convert people into dancers just by like telling them like, oh, yeah, like it's not what you think it is. I'm making a lot of money. I feel like a lot of people around you probably like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to start dancing. Right. And that, I mean, everybody is dancing almost. But um, kind of. I, I mean, I had a situation where I converted somebody into dancing, mm-hmm. but it was really because it was my best friend's friend. And that's what me and my best friend was doing. Uh, and she always had her around. But she was a cocktail waitress at the strip club. And I was just like, to me, she had mouthpiece. I was like, why are you doing that? You can make way more money yeah. doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And kind of like converted her into doing it. Huh. So, I mean, situations like that happen, like you kind of have a friend that you just want to do what you're doing. So you'll drag them along, maybe, yeah. you know, and then not only that, but then you have other girls that see what you're doing and they're interested because I was working at Hooters and there's a couple girls that wanted to know and I brought them along. Hmm. So there's been a big uh, story about like strippers rapping recently. <laughs> uh, I forget who said, I think it might have been Jermaine Dupri. Uh, yeah, it was. It was it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, you know, I feel like all the popping rappers that are girls are all like strippers so they should make an own genre for them and call it strap like stripper, <laughs> Stra- stripper <laughs> rap the strap <laughs> the strappers the strap um definitely not my forte but <laughs> if i have a couple drinks in me um i haven't smoked weed in a long time but if i do i'm put a beat on and i'm gonna spit something but i don't know <laughs> if i would ever go into the rapping thing but i do meet a lot of girls that you know feel like that like when you start dancing and you get involved in the, li- in the life, mm-hmm. you go through emotional things. Like, you know, people judge that. Mm-hmm. You don't want to look like you're not really doing anything. And there's options, you know? Like, let me be a la- lashes technician. Uh, like, okay, let yeah. me do nails. Let me be a rapper. Let me get out there. Let me be known like I'm doing something. So mm. I'm a, I met a few girls that go down that avenue, but everybody's doing it. So it's like... <laughs> So, and when you say like, everyone dances, what do you mean by that? I don't know. I feel like there's some girls that be in the club that should not be there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're <laughs> doing they're it for free type thing? Sometimes, yeah. They're like eating the food and taking shots and just sitting there oh, chilling. Man, you know? I'd be and pissed. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, before I had a baby, um, you know, I was in the gym a lot. So I feel like I really worked for my body. Like my image was my business. So. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of girls that would be in there and like, I'm not judging you, but I mean, she's in here. And, <laughs> and, I mean, and also too, like girls get their asses done, their titties done. And they didn't have that. Like mm-hmm. I've never got, I don't even have a tattoo. Like I've never got anything done. So for me, like, I feel like a lot of girls that go into the life, like, any girl can go into it because they can go get jobs done mm-hmm. and they do. So everybody mm. kind of, mm-hmm. are, are there a lot of, uh, 
I don't want to call them crackhead strippers, but just <laughs> but, but, but just based on the idea of you saying like <laughs> they in there eating the food and drinking, <laughs> like they probably just like they don't really. <laughs> They just in there getting the free food and drinks and shit and like pissing off the customers. And, Cause yeah. I, I feel like if a, if I was at a club with all my friends, right, and we bought a table and there was a girl there and we had hella food, we had a nice spread and some drinks. And this girl comes up, she's not even dancing, but she just like starts eating our food. And she's like, "No, I'm a dancer. I'm a dancer." I'd be kind of mad. I don't know. I mean, some <laughs> d- some don't even care. Like some like come there for you to just sit and chill with them. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, like I've never done coke a day in my life, but they'll be like with their keys like i'm like no i don't do that so <laughs> girls will go in there and they'll you know be doing other stuff so it's kind of like all about your mindset right if yeah you, if you go out there and you're trying to make some money you can make some money definitely if you go want to go there and fuck off you can do that you. too yeah. you can go to the club and have fun yeah <laughs> so i mean I, I don't know i can't say there's crackhead strippers but there's something there <laughs> <laughs> so do you feel like a certain type of customer uh, you would prefer versus because I've heard some things like I guess like someone was telling me one time that rappers really don't spend too much money when the club like at a strip club and shit like that they don't really be throwing money is there a preferable Saying Instagram customer? ain't real yeah <laughs> all right um, I mean Instagram is kind of real there's there's definitely categories you have your older men who are doctors lawyers mm-hmm. etc and they're married stuff. And they are lonely. Mm. So they'll come there and they'll have the time of their life with you. Mm-hmm. Then you have, you know, people in there that are just trying to get some. They'll spend some, but they want to get some. And then you have your drug dealers, if I'm going to be really real. And they are very generous with the ones. But sometimes, most of the time, they also are pimps. Uh, so they're mm-hmm. trying to recruit you. Businessmen. Yeah. So then it's just like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And my preference would definitely be the older men. Mm-hmm. Uh, the business, the older businessmen that just want company and like are very respectful to you. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, I do have black in my ethnicity. <laughs> I have no disrespect toward them. But I do avoid those in the club mm-hmm. that are of the mix because to me, in my eyes, you're wasting my time. Like, you just want to, um, in our terminology, knock them. No, <laughs> you want you. them to choose. And I don't have time for that. I came here to work. Mm. So I'll avoid that. And so my preference would be the businessman or, you know, the ones in there, even if they're not businessmen. You want the nerds in the squares. I want the nerds in the squares. <laughs> <bears. laughs> gotcha. So is there an interaction that you can call off top? that no, i want to know this do you have regulars like do people oh, like come every question. every week I and do. shit like that they don't come every week because you know some of them are offended that's all i want to text them for is like hey come see me at the club mm. but i do definitely have regulars if and sometimes i wait for them to hit me up because it's mm. recycled there's so many different people that come in so it doesn't matter but you know if i feel like I want to invite them in. I'll text them or hit them up and they'll come. Mm-hmm. Or they'll hit me up and be like, hey, I got some friends from out of town. We're looking for a good time. Where are you at tonight? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That's pretty so. dope. Referrals are big, huh? Yeah. Definitely. It's a business. Got period. It. Yeah. Well, that's mm-hmm. cool that you're kind of pivoting into more of a business, too, by like getting your. So you got an LLC and everything? Like, yes, damn, definitely. That's um, I'm actually waiting in on an IN number. So damn. we didn't get approved from the IRS. So it's legit money. It's not fake money like, yeah good for you That's why dope. not make it legit yeah mm. shit well so what i was gonna ask is do you have like a um story about someone coming in who was pushing the boundaries too much because obviously people are in there drinking having a good time doing shit do you have a story about someone pushing the line too far and then yes. the security had to come in and kick his ass or some shit definitely have that um just for like one minor thing i had someone when i'm dancing on them I, maybe he was drunk but he just kept smacking my ass like smacking oh, wow. my ass really hard and oh, shit. i was just like like you geez you gotta stop and he was just like well get off me i'm like okay i mean you already paid for your dance but fine and i let the security know just to keep an eye on him uh. because he's really aggressive mm-hmm. and then he felt really dumb later <laughs> about what he just did. I don't know if he was showing off mm-hmm. or however, because the security did come say something to him. Yeah. And it was just really just smacking my ass really hard. Like, that was really crazy. Like, yeah. Like, and treating me like I was just some, 
I don't know. Like an object or something? Yeah, like I'm nothing. Like, yeah, I'm going to smack your ass really hard. And I was like, can you please stop doing that? And then he was just like, okay, get off me. Like, I wasn't about anything. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Damn. It's like, I'm at work. There's guidelines. Yeah, Expect for real. You follow them. Yeah. If you don't follow them, then you, know, you should go somewhere else. Exactly. I mean, there's rules everywhere you go. Yeah. Mm. And that's the only bad thing that comes with it. Because you will have people that will do that. You have a lot of times it happens, honestly. Even if, like, they only paid for a regular dance and they're pulling off your top and, like, you have oh, to, shit. you know, and it's, like, it sucks because you're not disrespecting them, but they are kind of disrespecting you. Mm-hmm. And then they'll have an attitude about it, but it's, like, this is what this is what you paid for. Yeah, like, exactly. this is what you get. Like, <laughs> Have yeah. you ever, uh, my bad, Thank have you, you ever uh, had someone pay you, like, Cash App or, or uh, Venmo, Venmo or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> yes. I have. Like you know what? And that was kind of for a little bit, a little bit of our girls' way to kind of tuck some money because Ooh. we can sell them to cash up us or Venmo us, mm. or, you know, Zelle us, pay, PayPal if you have that, if we want to go to all the calibers. But yeah. <laughs> Hello, work. What's your email? Yeah. You make sure you got all the apps. Everything. Just everything in case they up. say they yeah. don't have Venmo. Oh, they don't. You got PayPal, <laughs> motherfucker. I know you I got that too. What's your Amazon? <laughs> you pull out one of the little swipers or the little glasses. The Apple okay, swipe. Yeah. Oh, fuck. The little square shit on yeah. your phone. Yes. Damn. You know, and they have them. And, but you know what? The people who run these businesses have picked up on that. So they're like, okay, at the end of the night, I'm counting the money. We need to check your every girl needs to hand over their phone. Oh, <laughs> we shit. need to check a cash app. So do they sign you like sign a contract with No, you we don't sign a contract. Do it's just about a respect, you know. Oh, okay. Like you so ain't trying if, to steal from them. Yeah. They give you a place of business. Yes, and if you are then you know they're you're replaceable, like I said. Yeah, huh. All kinds of girls I wanna dance. So. so how does that the, the money work then? Are you paying them like a uh, a four hour slot fee or how does it work? Like you pay them ten percent of what you make or how does the, the business work behind it? I mean, some places will take 20%, and then some places just want a flat rate right up front. Hmm. So It's like a barbershop, right? Barbers pay for their chair. Yeah, pay for the slot, pretty much. Yeah, you always got to pay to play. Hmm. <laughs> and like every kind of... Yeah. Shit, my bad, cutting you off. No, sorry. But, um, yeah, man, that's crazy. That's dope. Never thought about the business side of dancing before. That's interesting. I wonder if they make more money off, like, their drinks and shit, or, like, you know, charging you guys. They probably make a lot of drinks, man. Right? I mean, you would think. Yeah. I mean, they they definitely charge a lot for bottles. Like, you can charge 200 plus for just a bottle, like a Hennessy bottle. Sure. How much do you pay for a Hennessy bottle at the stores? The most? 30 bucks. Yeah. 35. Exactly. Real real. Oh, and they're charging you like 200. Damn. And they're, yeah, they're charging you $200 plus. Like, just depends look on cool? What. You think that's what it is? Like, the, the stage, the shock factor? I like, mean, it's damn. a club. They're supplying a service, you know? Yeah. The nightlife. Like, where can you get that? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can probably get a hotel and invite some girls to it or go invite them to your house or run an Airbnb. Or get on a party bus called Dabs. Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> Motion. <laughs> Motion. <laughs> right? So, I mean... I feel like it's 50-50 almost. It depends mm. on the night. Because say like you only have a few, say you have two tables, but you have 15 girls. Mm. And those 15 girls pay a flat rate to come in, $100 each. Uh, okay, you yeah. made more money off the girls than you did the tables. Mm. Or if it's the 20% and you have a few tables, maybe there's that one girl that knows, or two or three that really are making the money. And they're honest enough to submit Fifteen hundred dollars to you. Mm. You're taxing twenty percent. Yeah. Damn, that's hella true. Well, weren't you saying there was a thing between bartenders and, or was that you? That was our intern. Yeah. That was Hassan. Hassan. What were you the saying G. about that? No, just like I don't know if it's out here, but like a competition between like bartenders and uh, dancers. Like In terms of making money. Do you feel like there's a competition between the uh, the bartenders and? Because are you allowed to sell drinks as a, a dancer too? Can you kind of dabble in both or you have to get the person to come and take the order and shit um in california they don't do that but they're like hawaii you can like i can it's called a ladies drink i can get you to buy me a 40 dollars shot my favorite is tequila so if i want some tequila and you're there and you want to buy me a shot it's 40 dollars. i get 20 they get 20 damn that's dope but out here it's different yeah exactly so out here it's different um just bring the people in just bring mm. the people that are going to buy the bottles, and it doesn't really cross with any of that. So I'll, I feel like in California, so far, that I experienced, there's 
no competition with that. That mm -hmm. would be a super cool club to go to, I feel like, where if they had that kind of upsell factor, where it's like if you knew hella about tequila, and I was like, I don't know what I should get, but you're a dancer at the same time. You're like, oh, yeah, you should really get this bottle, this, this, this. <laughs> and then you get a cut. That'd be so super weird. Different but experience. that happens, um, dang, in Hawaii, again. Like, if I... But they sell champagne. They don't sell the bottle. Oh, yeah. So if I sell a champagne bottle, depending on which one, and it ranges from like three fifty, I believe, until like up like fifteen hundred dollar champagne bottles, and I sell that, I get half of that. Damn. No matter what it is, I sell. But That's they're dope. not bottles out here. They're bottles. Mm -hmm. it, it would be nice to get a percentage because I'm bringing the people here. I'm attracting the attention yeah. to your club without me. What is it? For real. And I feel like you have the opportunity to direct that sale a lot more, too. Because if they're, like, all about you, whatever you say, they're going to go with. They're like, exactly. oh, well, my favorite bottle is this. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, let's get that one. <laughs> and then that's a sale right there. You know what I mean? Exactly. Or you can just be like, uh, I don't drink that. I only drink this. Yeah. And it's more than yeah, yeah. whatever it is you're drinking. 100%. No? I see. Might have to open up a club out here. <laughs> so how long have you been professionally dancing? At three years, three, uh, three years exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's a lot of moving around for that short time span. It is, but um, I mean, when you start, you just, I mean, you can't stay stagnant for too long. Mm -hmm. It's like standing in place at one time. You gotta, I mean, in that lifestyle, I feel like um, moving around is important. Staying in place, and it, you won't make as much as you're trying to make while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of girls I know definitely can relate to. You know, like staying in one place, you kind of get the same people kind of recycle. And it's rare, like pe new people come in, but it's not all the time. So, you know, you have to move around and then come back. People will miss you and they want you to come back. Mm. Oh, that makes sense. Do you do you ever see yourself going back to like a, a nine to five after having a job like this? As far as like working for yourself and being your own your own boss? Like, can you see yourself going back? Um, I... I've tried. I don't know. That's something that I still play with on and off. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, back like to go back from where we started, I was going to school. And then I started dancing because I felt like it was really hard for me to start all over again and frustrating. Then got into dancing. I was making money. I'm making like doctor, lawyer money. Damn. Why would I want to go and work? And I experienced that recently working at Hooters, working that nine to five job. And it was frustrating to be only set at a minimum, you know, mm -hmm. and I play with that all the time. Like, there's a lot of things I know I can do. I'm, I'm only 23 years old. There's a lot, like, my future is so far ahead of me. There's so many options, so many things that I can get into. But I haven't really made a decision on that one yet. Mm -hmm. I definitely probably would go back, but I don't know if I would stay. I probably would go back and forth. Mm. So you kind of briefly brought it up, but you have a, a baby, right? Yes, I do. How has that affected your career as a dancer? Has it made, I mean, of course you make your own schedule, so I mean, it's kind of plays together almost. Yeah, it definitely does. And I'm not there for too long and mm -hmm. it's at night. Mm -hmm. So usually he's sleeping when I go, but I also breastfeed. So, you know, it kind of like, it's a struggle with being there because it's a mental state. I'm exhausted all day mm -hmm. and I deserve a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I deserve some relief, but I can't really do that because I have to breastfeed. So. Um, it's it's definitely a battle. And then at the same time, what I was used to, on the go, on the go, on the go, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. I can stay, I can do from 9 p.m. till 7 in the morning if I wanted to, having fun at the same time. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. I have to set a time limit. Mm -hmm. So it, it just gives a time limit for the money, but it definitely makes me go harder. Gotcha. That's really about it. Mm -hmm. uh, the question I have is, I'm sure a lot of guys will ask you this, um, how does your man feel about dating a, a stripper or a professional dancer? You know what I mean? Because it's like, I, me personally, like, I ain't saying I'm insecure, but I'd be kind of insecure. Like, yeah, my girl's kind of dancing with somebody else. She it, he know, it, you know it, that too. That type of syndrome, you know what I mean? And she, I mean, he knows what's happening. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how does he feel Well, if you I, have a significant other? I'm lucky enough to um, have somebody who understands mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the life. But I, we do have our battles where, you know, maybe he feels like he's not man enough because 
he's not providing as much as I'll bring home in one night. Mm -hmm. And then he's bored for some reason. The little four hours the most that he's with the baby, he's like, I'm bored, you know, Mm -hmm. and I'm out at night having fun, as you can say. But he's fine with it. Like, he's, I mean, if he wanted me to stop, I definitely would stop any day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't mind worried. I'm not, like, signed to the life. Like, I need to be in it. But he definitely understands. And there's times where I have moments where I have to come home and vent about situations, like, girls hating on me and how I didn't make enough. And he's kind of, like, counseling me through it and making me have a better mindset and supporting it. Mm -hmm. So... Luckily, I have somebody who definitely supports it. Do you know any stories where, like, people, you know, have other situations where they're, like, not the same way as your guy would be? Yeah, I definitely do, um, <laughs> by experience. Mm, okay. <laughs> um, he would judge everything I did. Even if I was with that person every single day, like, in my way, because I don't do anything else besides dance, mm-hmm. he would be like, to me, my way of recycling you to come in, because I'm not hanging out with you, I'll text you and be your friend. So you will come back and see me. He did not like any of that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he let me go dance, but we would argue every single day, and every single thing I did was a judgment. And then it, he was able to, like, kind of, like, throw shade on me. Like, I'm a slut. I'm, I'm a dancer. Like, things like that. And arguments would start getting thrown at me, and it, you know, would hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So early on in the dating game before you are with who, you, who you're with now, um, was it something that you would bring up like on the first date? Be like, oh, by the way, I'm a dancer. Or would they have already known you and try to like pick you up from the club? Or? Right. Um, I don't think I've ever experienced um, Telling, like dating somebody and telling them I'm a dancer. Mm-hmm. I experiencing knowing somebody who regularly goes to the club mm-hmm. and hanging out with them and getting to know uh, them. Okay. Yeah. And then eventually, like, us just being really cool and hitting it off. Huh. Okay, that makes sense. So never telling them. Yeah. Love in the club. <laughs> Better in the club. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a, uh, most of your friends are like in the same business as you or do you have friends that do other things as well? Um, honestly, I have like, to me, really two close friends. Um, I have a close friend that was in it, but she's no longer. Mm-hmm. And then I have a, a friend from like back in Oregon. Like we grew up from elementary school together and to this day we're friends, just different lifestyles. Mm-hmm. So she's a country girl, no longer that no more. <laughs> I'm out here in the city. So, but no. So what, what you t- briefly talked about your uh, ethnicity. Yes. You said you're a little bit African American. What else are you? You look Native American. Well, I am black, white, Filipino, but then my white is German, Polish, and Cherokee. Oh, Damn. wow. Super mixed. Yeah, super mixed. My mom, she's German, Polish, Cherokee, and then my dad, he's black and Filipino. Huh. So, so talk about that a little bit, because I imagine that was difficult. When was the first time you kind of told your parents, like, hey, like, by the way, I'm a dancer, or did they find out through relatives, or... How did that go down? Well, my dad is deceased, so oh, I really so was with my mom most of my life. Um, but my mom was always cool. Mm-hmm. Like, she's like my friend. Sometimes mm-hmm. I feel like I'm her mom. <laughs> so my mom was always, like, she's always cool. To this day, if like, we're not, like, close as the parenting thing goes. Like, she's not my mom mom. She's mm-hmm. more like my best friend. I will not call a friend and vent about any of my problems. I will definitely call my mom. And she never judges me. She just always has... I'll be like, Mom, you know I want you to be really real with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell me the truth. Yeah. Should I do this? So um, with her, like, she never judged me about anything I did. And any we, we've we had, like, some arguments, and she never thrown it in my face. Hmm. She was never that. Wow. So. That's awesome. And What's then my grandparents, on top of that, um, my, my grandpa, he is very into the church. Mm-hmm. And when I first started dancing, I struggled with mentally being okay with it because I did have family on my dad's side that judged me. And knowing who I was or trying to remember who I was and being who I'm becoming, this new me that I know now. Mm-hmm. And I remember taking a trip back to Oregon, and on Father's Day, I was like, you know what, I'm going to take my grandpa out on Father's Day. And I did, and I had a conversation with him, and I was like, man, I'm, I'm doing this I'm doing something different with my life now, but I feel like it's caused me to drink more 
and a part of me is telling me to like you know stop doing that and a part of me wants to stay and he had to give me like a scenario he didn't judge me like I you know I kind of told him I was dancing in mm -hmm. a different way and he told me um there's blessings that come when you kind of like leave things that don't do you really any good mm -hmm. behind but to this day I'm still a dancer but he never judged me he just kind of gave me advice on um, things that happened in his life that he knew was bad that he was doing and then he just left it alone and then mm. how much more came to him after leaving mm. huh it's interesting I'm sure you're super like uh, spiritual after the whole being in Car a coma for three weeks yeah, for real. type thing I always was spiritual okay I was a spiritual um, beforehand um, but then afterhand which was crazy I started understanding the word better after my accident before i felt like i'm just gonna go to church just to go to church mm -hmm. i'm singing and worship and then i'm listening to the word but i would eventually get bored mm -hmm. <laughs> and after my accident i ended up i don't know finding a church actually it's called my redemption i go to speaking of and i love that pastor like every time i go in there no matter what i'm going through he's for some reason is speaking directly to me i feel like mm. And, but I never lost it. Mm -hmm. Never lost that. that was good. So after the accident, have you seen like video of you from before the accident and been like, whoa, like, damn, I was acting hella different than I'm acting now or like felt like you were looking at a completely different person? Has it happened? Or? Yeah, definitely. I have. I looked at it who I was. Um, I was way different. Way, way different. I don't know. Um, how so? Or like, you mean like just even the way you're speaking or like how deep did it go, the difference? I feel like I was really way nicer. I was really nice. Um, I wore like flannels and yeah. I was really country, like boots. I was not <laughs> wearing no skirt with a crop top and, you know, different color extensions in and eyelashes and a lot of makeup. I was more natural. I didn't get my nails done. Uh, I painted my nails, <laughs> but I didn't get them done. <laughs> Um, my whole wardrobe, my whole attitude, everything did a complete 360. Mm -hmm. That's a crazy experience. That must. Have, how did it feel to see that? Was it like, I feel like it'd be almost seeing like a twin, like you never had. You'd be like, wait a second. <laughs> right. Um, there was a moment where I mourned over myself. Like mm. I mourned over something I didn't know what I lost. Because <laughs> huh. so I was like, I wish I was her again, but I didn't know who that was. Yeah. So it was um, a challenge at first, but now that I'm older, I'm like, wow, I feel like I upgraded. Yeah. I look a lot better than I ever did before. <laughs> I was the ugly duckling in Montana and Oregon. You know, all the I had the curly, I had the curly hair. Mm -hmm. I was the curly hair, light skinned girl with the with the green eyes. But everybody else loved the white girls, the mm -hmm. Mexican girls, the white girl hair. Mm -hmm. So. Um, coming to California, where everybody thought I was so pretty, and then upgrading to how I am now, I would say, I'm. I finally grew to be satisfied with it. That's dope. What are uh, say some of the cooler places professionally dancing has like brought you? Like, what are some cool shit that has happened? Some cool stuff that's happened. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, you know, from being a dancer, you've been invited to so many places, or. Dancing you know, for Mayweather, going to Vegas. <laughs> right. Um, oh, my gosh. To me, this was cool because I never heard of this such thing. I was invited to do a private party in L.A. at Justin Bieber's old mansion oh, for shit. gamers. People really get paid. For, like, the e-gamer dudes and shit? I don't know what gamers they were but i know just video games in general like oh, they shit. play yeah, video games and get paid so much money oh fuck and i was yeah. <laughs> that was the coolest experience i ever had in my life like yeah. i'm really it was different yeah i have a, i'm doing a private party for gamers mm -hmm. and they're in this mansion and they got a chef in here like i'm really getting treated i don't i don't even know how to explain it it was very interesting experience, but very cool. At the were same they like time. playing video games and shit, and you were just like walking around hanging out, or what? No, but downstairs, like when where we had, we were storing our bags and stuff. They had, the whole like, they had rows of where they just sit there like computer chairs with their 
their whole system set up where they play the video games, where they're making their money. Damn. I was just like, I never heard of. That was my first time, and that, I believe that was like last year. Damn. That was my first time ever experiencing and, and finding out that people play video games for money. Millions of dollars, by the way. Yeah. yeah. It's serious. <laughs> well, there was a kid who just won like $5 million for Fortnite or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like a yeah. 16-year-old kid with $5 million I playing video games. never even thought that was possible. Like, it was never a thought in my mind. Uh, my girl works for... Uh, Twitch, which is like the most popular streaming service for video gamers. Right. So I, yeah, I know it's very, it's very in right now. It's a big thing. It's huge. It's yeah. been in. We're late. Yeah, yeah. yeah seriously. <laughs> you know that that gamer just got paid a hundred million. Really? For what? To <laughs> go to my, you know, Ninja. Ninja. Yeah, yeah. Oh, to go to Mixer. To go to Mixer. Mm-hmm. Hundred million dollars. Yeah, that's, that's nuts. crazy. That's nuts, bro. That's Drake money. Yeah, for real, for playing video games, man. Shit. And he's not singing, performing on stages. He's sitting, twiddling his thumbs in his Whatever room, drinking his Red Bulls and <laughs> Mountain Dew, flaming yeah. hot Doritos and shit. Ridiculous, man. Have you ever tried to be? You, you play video games? I used to when I was younger. Okay. My brother loves video games, so like I used to play with him, but I get bored really fast. But he would sometimes for entertainment. I would just at night just sit on the couch and just watch him while he's on his mic, and he's he's Kinda really connecting it. with friends. Oh, like yeah. he's making friends and playing Grand Theft Auto, and they're really on a mission. He's showing me like, oh, watch, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and show him like my own little setup, and it's underground, and he's bring. <laughs> they're they're really connecting and talking smack to each other. Like I they've bet. been the bestest friends of of life. <laughs> well, so a funny story actually. My girlfriend's brother um, recently met a kid that he's been playing video games with for four years. I guess he lived in Montana or somewhere in the, wow. uh, somewhere not in California. And he flew out to California and they met up for the first time because they've been playing video games together for like four years, but never met. And then they finally met. I think That's I thought crazy. it was a little weird. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. When I was seeing that, it was crazy. And then like when they sign on, it's like they're connected. They know when they're signing on, but they don't even have each other's phone number. <laughs> They're not texting each other like, hey, I'm about to hop on live. Yeah. You're going to come too? That's <laughs> like they funny. hop on and then instantly. And he's like, no, I don't, I don't want to mess with anybody else on here. He's my, like, they just, they're connected. <laughs> Squad. <laughs> right. That's how it is these days, though. You know? Seriously. Video games, online, all that stuff. People don't even, like, meet. Have you ever, like, dated online before? No, never. Okay. Like yeah. Tinder and shit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. no, I've never even, I don't even have a membership. Mm-hmm. A Tinder membership. <laughs> <laughs> That's how a lot of me people meet these days. Like, oh, I feel like sure. more often than not, right? You meet someone online than than in person, which I think is weird. I don't think I've ever dated yeah, anyone it's, online. It's strange. Yeah. I've I've had a lot of stories from my friends. Like they'll meet up with Tinder people, and uh, they won't look like anything like they do in their profile oh, pictures. They get catfished. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I've never met anyone, but I've definitely experienced, like, in another way, like, for Instagram's sake. Mm-hmm. Like, if there's a, like, when I went uh, for the private party for the gamers, I went out there, and I all, I follow, like, shout out to Capri in L.A. I follow her on Instagram, and, like, I always related to her because I feel like I'm low-key thick, you know, and she's thick. And I'm like, dang, she looked great in the club. I need to look like that. Mm-hmm. So um, I followed her, and when I was in L.A. after the the you know, a little private party. I left and me and my friend were like, let's go to the strip club and throw some ones. Like, and we go there and that's who I was looking for in the club was Capri because of her Instagram and mm-hmm. she's known and this is the club she works at and she was there. She she actually looked like what she looks like on Instagram though. Oh, wow. So <laughs> I thought it was going to be the other way around. You got to meet her and everything? Yeah, I did. But I was trying to pay for a lob dance and she didn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. My what, money wasn't enough. <laughs> never meet your heroes. Do you? How often do you uh, dance for girls or women? Um, very often, almost every other night or every mm. night that I work. Um, mm. They're usually the funnest ones to dance on because they don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just having fun while you dance on them. And you know they're not going to be too pushy and all that. Yeah. Sure. And then at the same time, if I need to make some money, I was like, ask him if he'll buy you a dance. And she'll do it right away and oh, take all shit. his money. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. That's the cleverest one. Damn. You got to have game work in there. You got to know. Oh, yeah, you do. have to have finesse. <laughs> Damn, that's hella funny. 
So on a, on a kind of more, I don't want to say a darker note, but has anyone ever approached you to be like, hey, like you should take it to the next level? Because I'm sure there's some girls in there who are kind of, I don't say double dipping, but they're, I don't know. No stripper hoes. Yeah, yeah, stripper hoes. Triple dipping. <laughs> triple dip, yeah, triple <laughs> Not dipping. Double dipping. They're double triple dipping. dipping. <laughs> um, I've had two categories. I've had one girl assume that's what I do, mm. and I was like, no, and they don't believe me. And then I've had someone be trying to connive me into the doing both, and his catch was, like, or his way of saying it was, well, you can give lap dances on random people, and I, but. What's the difference? Like, you don't think that's gross, then? Oh, there's a huge difference. <laughs> that's crazy, though. And that's how I felt like. I mean, you're right. I mean, it's, I am giving lap dances on random people, but I'm not getting penetrated. Yeah. By different people <laughs> on a consistent basis. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty big difference. It's a big difference. Yeah. Emotionally, I'm not established mentally either. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. What's the most money you think? Or you would say you've been offered to do something like that? And like $4,000. Shit. Damn. And like from one dude just like, hey. Yeah, but more of like showing the money, like telling uh, me. But that's way different, you know? How often do you, would you say it happens? Like, prop, like not in you in general, but like as to far as. Average dancer. Yeah. I mean, every night I'm always offered some money for that. Damn. But not that amount. Ooh. That was the highest amount. But I'm always offered. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they want you to go to the bathroom with them. And it's just Damn. like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> no respect. Damn. But guess what? There's girls that are doing that. So uh, that's shit. why it's even comfortable for anyone to ask. Wow. Period. Do you ever, like, condemn girls like that? And, like, knock their, or you don't want to knock their style because they're making money. Like, you don't want to, you know, hate on someone. But at the same time, you're like, you're making it bad for the business because now everyone kind of expects that. Um. No, actually, I to be honest, I don't think I ever um, have felt any type of way towards that because there's a lot of different people that come in, mm. you know, just like anybody who comes to a tourist spot or different restaurant. There's just so many different people that come in. Mm -hmm. So there's some people that are like that and there's some people that aren't. There's some people that are disrespectful, some people that aren't respectful. So I don't knock anyone's hustle. Like, however you get your money is how you get your money. And I, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. I have no, like, you know, I don't know. I don't. I've never walked a mile in your shoes. Mm -hmm. Huh? Are there? Uh, would you ever like dance overseas in like a foreign country, or have you heard stories about like, oh, it's different out there? Because you said like Hawaii is kind of different with like the kind of upselling factor. I'm curious if like in Europe and stuff, it's like way different. Um, I've never been to a foreign country. Would I dance out there? I don't know. I would really have to do some research before mm -hmm. I ever did, mm -hmm. because. That's kind of scary. Like, when I went to Atlanta, it was really hard. And that's not foreign. Mm -hmm. That was really hard to get established in a club. And then let alone you had getting established in a club, you have to do the same process for every club that you work mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. And that is a lot of money spent to make money, mm -hmm. especially when you don't live out there regularly and have the people. But in Hawaii, I feel like, um, it, yeah, definitely a different establishment. You don't have to pay a fee to work. They actually respect you for coming to their club and making money they actually give you a fee if you do a certain amount of stages oh wow so if you do four or more stages you're getting ten dollars per stage that mm. the house is giving you you're not giving them any money but they do expect you to you know give a tip out to the dj yeah. give a tip out to the bouncers mm. however many that are working there mm. so i feel oh. like i'm going there like i feel respected because we both are a business here i'm yeah. bringing business but you are the business mm -hmm. i'm the business too though too so it's like you know pretty huh. fair so like uh, people like Alexa Sky and stuff like that. You know who that is, right? Obviously. No? Is that a porn star? No, she's uh, a stripper that like Drake raps about and stuff. She's uh, super famous in like Texas. That's the one he had a kid with, isn't it? No, nah, that's some other chick. But she, I think she <laughs> might be a stripper, too. I think she's a stripper, too. Yeah. Anyway. But Alexa Sky, she's from Texas. Um, and she's, oh, she has a kid with Fetty Wap and shit like that. She's uh, okay. kind of famous. Um, but she'll like go guest attend at these different places. You think it's the same for her where she kind of has to get these licenses and stuff? Or she just shows up and makes money? And they don't charge her to, to be there, right? Because she's going to bring people in. Well, um, in those legit businesses, I, she definitely has to get licensed, I feel like. They, no one has privilege like that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just like the celebrities are going to have to pay to get in. So 
Um, I would say she would, I don't know, though, exactly. Um, but I definitely think she would definitely have to get licensed. Vegas, it's protocol. Mm -hmm. And those places, like, you know, you can't wear a G-string. You have to wear, like, a two-finger thong. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, there's a lot of security around it because there's so many entities with uh, ways you can get sued. And people have to protect their businesses. So I would definitely say mm -hmm. unless them people want to buy out that business and buy yeah. them out, <laughs> she would have to get licensed. So, and then uh, another question I had was, say a girl is trying to get into stripping. You know, what's some, like, I guess some things you would tell her about advice. the business? Advice. Man. Always work sober. Mm -hmm. Get them drunk. Don't get you drunk. <laughs> get them messed up. Don't get messed up. And I don't know. Honestly, um, it would be because there's different insecurities with girls. So if I was going to give advice with insecurity, because that's really all it is. It, it doesn't take much to be a dancer mm -hmm. unless you're not good at it or out of shape. But, um, you know, like you're not there to make friends and get involved in it so deep with the friends and, and the people that come in there. Mm -hmm. Just get go in there for what you're for, going in there for and respect yourself. If It's kind of hard to Give advice on that area because there's different levels. Like, gotcha. Uh, as long as you respect yourself, right? Different levels. Yeah, there's, different ways, level there's different respect. levels, so it's hard to give advice in that area. It would mm. be mainly on the specific girl. Yeah, more gotcha. like just like know you and like kind of be who Yeah, you, just be like, who. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> I think you said it right at the beginning, though. You know, know why you're here. Yeah, you know? that's true. Facts. Yeah, know exactly yeah. why you're here and don't forget it because it's easy to get caught up. There's a lot of girls that get started mm -hmm. in it and end up doing things that they never done before. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, if you come in here to respect yourself or if you come in here to sell all of yourself. <laughs> to know why you're there. Know why you're there. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been trying to ask a lot of our guests um, this question. Have you ever had any, like, paranormal experiences with, like, ghosts or anything that's kind of, like, otherworldly, I guess? Oh, my gosh. A lot of stuff. I've had a lot of paranormal things happen to me. Uh, <laughs> I've had, like, I, I don't know why, but I grew up with, like, nightmares, like, crazy nightmares. Mm. But I also have sleep paralysis where oh, wow. I will literally have, like, I don't know if it's really, like, the adult body experience or, t like, fully what it is because... When I look it up and do research about it, it's like demonic attacks, and they feel so, they're so scary, and I feel like weighed down. I oh, uh, sleep paralysis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like having like a real <clears throat> life experience, but my I'm awake, but my body's asleep, mm -hmm. so I can't I can't even really get out of the dream, mm. but I can get out of it. I eventually do, but the things that are happening in the dream are like very like scary. <laughs> like like I feel like. It's evil. Like it doesn't feel right when I wake up. I got my heart is pounding, and I'm scared to fall back asleep because I don't want to go through it again. And there's been yeah. times where I woke myself up from the sleep paralysis and then fall back asleep, and it happened again. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, that's happened to me before sleep paralysis. It's scary. It yeah, is. Man. But I usually don't have nightmares before. I just like wake up and I'm like, I can't like move my body, and it just it's fucking scary. It's it's weird. Yeah. No I, thanks. And anything I, else? Yeah. I've had um, an experience where, like, I just woke up because something just breathed really hard on my, like, on my neck, like, just a, a breath of air. And it, when I woke up, it scared me. I, it was so long ago. I don't remember if, like, I uh, was having, a, a, like, a scary dream or what it was. But then after that, and it's in the same room at my grandma's house. I woke up to something like weighing, like weighing me down on my chest, and it was like just dark. And they were like, "I'm gonna take your soul," and I was like, "No, the fuck, you're not." In my head, and I started singing "Jesus Loves Me" song. Oh wow! <laughs> it was weird experience, but I also was younger. I was like in the middle school, uh -huh. but I've always had periodic like little. Maybe it's just nightmares, or I don't know how to explain the experiences. But mm. damn, that's heavy. Definitely some scary stuff. 
have you had those since your accident and stuff like that or was it just from your childhood um yeah i the sleep paralysis i definitely had like i i have that kind of frequent yeah hmm. yeah I actually remember you saying that you had that. I think it was from the Scotty podcast. Yeah. You were asking him, you were like, so what's going on, bro? With sleep paralysis, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess they say it's a, it's a part of your sleep process when you, yeah. your brain's REM sleep. woken up, but your body hasn't yet. Yeah. So it's like a pro- I guess it's a part of the process where because uh, if your body didn't paralyze itself, it would act out the dreams. Oh, yeah. So your body has to put itself to sleep. Otherwise, you'd be kicking and moving all crazy and knocking people out. And so it's like an evolutionary thing. But then if you are having some weird kind of interaction in your brain, you wake up during that process. So your body's still asleep, but your mind's like completely awake. So you're like you're trapped in it until your body can catch up and then you wake up out of it. Yeah, but like where did I get that information from? Because the experience I've had was never a good one. Like that, it's so scary. Oh well, that's the thing. Cause like, yeah, that's it actually happened to me in the past too. It's like you wake up and like you're like, I need to move right now, but you can't. And then like it immediately associates something's wrong, and then it like materializes this whole negative emotion in that moment. I used to think that too. Like I would like think like, oh shit, there's a monster over there in the corner. It's gonna come get me or some shit. Yeah, but like I'm having a real life dream, and. For a moment, like, I, I eventually got better at it, but I don't even realize that this is just a dream. I feel like it's a real-life thing, and it's scaring it's scaring the hell out of me. <laughs> Damn. And then I have to, like, try to wake myself out of the dream. And then I wake up, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, what was, like, what was happening? Damn. That's nuts. Well, shit, you want to ask the question? <laughs> you can ask it this time. Okay. Well, that's usually <laughs> we your question. Switch it, we can switch it up. <laughs> Um, so it, would you give any advice? I mean, we kind of already asked it technically, yeah. but just in general to any person coming up in life, maybe going through hardships or going through struggle, what advice would you give going through the experiences you've gone through to help someone else out? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, my advice would be to reflect, always reflect and th- like, For me, it's really hard because I have a mental disability. Like, you know, I have something that's damaged. So there's a lot of things that play a big part that really makes it hard for me. And that is, for some reason, I'm really extra sensitive. Like, I will, something little will happen and that will take over my whole entire day. But what I've been trying to do for myself is really, like, never act in the moment. Always, like, think about it. And sometimes even when I'm in the heat of the moment, like I'm raging or feel rage or whatever I'm going through, I have to just like let that mind set at the moment pass or whatever I'm going through. Like give it a little time and think about it and then react on it because and and that's the best advice I can get because it's so much better because sometimes there's been times where, for example, I've been really mad in the moment and there's all kinds of things crazy things that I'll think when I'm mad or whatever I'm going through like some something stupid happened like somebody just cut me off on the freeway and Mm -hmm. like (laughs) I'm really mad like I need to hunt them down on the freeway and (laughs) cut them back off (laughs) instead just sitting there in the moment and like letting those feelings go away and then thinking about like okay that's it's not even worth it or like what it doesn't matter anymore. I don't know if that makes sense. That makes sense. Kind of like, perfect sense. Yeah. yeah, let it meditate on it a little bit. Let time pass, and mm-hmm. then make a reaction. Yeah, you have to with in every situation and anything that you go through. Because my favorite show is First Forty Eight, <laughs> and motherfuckers don't think. It's like they do the <laughs> dumbest shit, and they get caught, and they just. It's like all you have to do is think for like ten more seconds. Literally, and you wouldn't have hurt this person. You wouldn't be going to jail forever. Mm-hmm. Like all you had to do was just think, just ten think seconds. About it. Yeah, but it doesn't happen like that, right? That quick decision, and it goes your whole life. Facts. Exactly. Literally. Yeah. Well, shit. Thank you, Destiny. Thanks for coming on. Chris. We appreciate you. And where, where can everyone find you if they're looking for you? Uh, for, for, as far as social media, do you want to plug that, or you want to keep it separate? Yeah, um, it is Instagram, of course. Uh, Dame Paid. So D A M three Paid. Gotcha. Uh, so you probably don't want to shout out where you work, huh? You don't want people coming up. And she works in San Jose. Flo I work Kia. in San Jose, so if DM you're, me. If you <laughs> find her. <laughs> Book me. <laughs> I'll definitely reach back out to you. Sure. Oh, well, thank you for coming on. Yeah, of course. For all I know. Hey.